What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Chris and here we explore products, places, and things that help us live a more enjoyable life. Today we're gonna run through SRAM versus Shimano and why I think that SRAM is the go-to group in 2022. Now this week, I'm stoked we're gonna be traveling a little bit. I'm gonna be up in Utah, training with a team out of Salt Lake City. They've invited us out for a couple days. So we're gonna cruise around Southern Utah and enjoy some riding out there. And yes, I will be bringing the SL7 and not the Athos because yeah, I still have the SL7. So I'm gonna ride it while I have it. Before everybody runs to the comments and said, dude, you're nuts. How is it that you could say that SRAM is better than Shimano? Shimano's so smooth, it's a superior product. Let me just say that I think both of these brands make phenomenal group sets. On my Tarmac SL7, I have 11 speed Dura-Ace DI2. And on my Athos, I have SRAM Red ETAP Axis, and both groups are phenomenal. But I think that SRAM wins out in just a few different marks. As always, I share my perspective as someone who may be a little bit like you. I enter the occasional race, ride around 7,500 miles a year, and I don't get paid to ride a bike. But man, do I love to smash the pedals with friends in between work, family, and real life obligations. I should also add that all the comments that I make about Shimano and SRAM apply to all the different group sets. So Dura-Ace, Ultegra, and 105, as well as on the SRAM side, Red, Force, and Rival. When it comes to aesthetics, I think this is where Shimano really takes the win. See, I really like the clean and compact look of the Shimano group sets, especially when it comes to the hoods as well as the crank sets. If you look at the Dura-Ace crank sets, I really like just like that clean gloss black look. And when you look at the hoods and you compare the SRAM and Shimano hoods, you notice that the SRAM hoods are much, much bigger. In fact, when I went from Shimano to SRAM, it took me a minute to adjust to the hoods. And they just look enormous coming from Shimano. That being said, they don't look terrible, but I do think that Shimano takes the win here when it comes to aesthetics. While aesthetics are mildly important, functionality is incredibly important. And here I think these group sets tie. They're just different. I wouldn't say that one is necessarily better than the other. And I think it boils down to a lot of personal preference. When you shift with SRAM, you're using the left and right shifters to go up and down the rear cassette, and you push both of them in to move the front derailleur. With Shimano, you simply use the right shifter to go up and down on the cassette, and you use the left shifter to adjust the front derailleur. Where I will give Shimano a little bit of the upper hand is I do feel like their shifting is a little bit smoother and a little bit more crisp especially on the front derailleur. And I've heard that the new 12-speed group set is even smoother than the 11-speed group set that I have. I think the Shimano shifting is crisp, it's smooth, the rear derailleur functions exactly how it should. And with SRAM, you know that you're shifting, you can kind of feel it. Dare I say it's clunky, which it's not, it's still smooth, but compared to Shimano, there's just a little bit more noise and it's a noticeable shift where with Shimano, each time it's a smooth, buttery shift. When it comes to charging and batteries, I feel like SRAM is a real winner here. I think you're almost deciding on like a platform like Apple or Android. And when you've got multiple bikes on the platform, it makes the system very easy. And I say that because it's so easy to simply grab a battery and throw it on a charger once a week or once every two weeks, depending on how often you're riding. And if you've got multiple bikes with access, you can simply swap between the different bikes. So in my case, I've got the Crux, the Athos, and the Epic, all with access. And so if one battery is dead, I can pull another battery off of another bike and simply add it to the bike that I'm going to be riding. So I think there's a huge convenience factor there with access alone. One of the other reasons that I really like this RAM battery system is if I'm out on a ride and one of the batteries dies in my front or rear derailleur, I can simply pull off the battery that has more juice and put it on the derailleur that I'm gonna be using more often, typically the rear derailleur. And the same on my mountain bike. If I happen to have a battery on the rear derailleur that dies, I can simply pull it off of the dropper and put it on to the rear derailleur and it'll have enough to get me home without any issues. The counter to all of this is that Shimano's battery system only needs to be charged once every couple months, or at least that's what I found with the DI2 on the Tarmac. 
The other advantage that Shimano has is that you don't have to worry about those 2032 shifter batteries that die every so often. And I've heard that it's something crazy like five or 10,000 shifts before one of those 2032 batteries dies in the shifter. But when they do die, you're really left stranded unless you happen to be carrying around a 2032 battery. So look, if you are used to charging batteries on a regular basis, this RAM system is pretty easy and you can incorporate that into the other devices and things that you charge. If you're one who likes to simply charge your bike up every couple months, then the Shimano system may be best for you. For me, I really like this RAM system. I'm already used to charging phones and laptops and cameras. It's easy to just pull off the batteries, throw them on the charger once, twice a week, whatever it needs to be, and it's super, super simple. When it comes to tech and apps and programs that are used to make adjustments to your drivetrain, I think this is again where SRAM wins. SRAM has done an incredible job of investing into the user experience. You simply download an app, you connect your drivetrain or your components via Bluetooth to the app, and you can make adjustments, you can see battery levels, you can update firmware, all from the app. And don't get me wrong, Shimano also has that, but the experience is very, very different, and it feels like you're working on a program that's much, much older. It seems to me like SRAM is constantly updating and working to improve their user interface, and it feels like they're building a drivetrain and component system for the future. So again, that's where I feel like SRAM has the upper hand here, is they're just building something that has a better user experience than Shimano. Cost-wise, here's where SRAM wins again. If you were to look at the Durace group set as well as the SRAM Red group set, for Durace, you're looking at about $4,200. For Red, you're looking at about $3,700. And then the other group sets trickle down and are priced accordingly. So again, the winner here is SRAM. Save a few hundred dollars. While there's a huge element of personal preference when it comes to a group set, I believe that SRAM wins on cost, tech, and charging and batteries. And that's why I believe it's the platform for the future. And that's why I've outfitted the last two bikes that I've built with SRAM ETAP Axis. Add in the Epic, which has Axis, and now I've got a whole family of SRAM bikes and it just makes everything incredibly seamless. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Which group sets do you like and why? Or which one's the value group set out of all of these? I'd love to know your thoughts. Drop me a comment below. And until next time, peace.